you know, um, as more his word is, whose word are you listening to? There's also a, a subtitle, if you like, what do you think of the Trinity? Now, Sheila's going to read a couple of scriptures. Reading from Genesis 1, verses 1 to 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. I'm reading from John 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But the first time mankind was challenged about the actual spoken Word of God was in the Garden of Eden, and it was by Eve. In Genesis 3, 1 to 2, says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you should not eat of any tree in the garden? The words that had been changed by the serpent were very subtle, a small alteration to the words God actually spoke, almost missable, if you did not listen correctly to the words. You may eat of every tree, other interpreters say any tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, were the actual words God said to Adam. This was the very first opportunity for man to listen to what was being said about God's word. The first opportunity to correct the false words and say no to a false interpretation of God's words by the serpent. In John 1 verse 5 it says, well, But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we know that we are in him. Because man did not keep his word in the garden, we were no longer being perfected, as that verse says. But we are now being unperfected by listening to other words, other interpretations of his word that were different words to God's words. We were under this unperfected state until Jesus set us free. That was until the Lord came to pay the price to set us free. We have been given a second chance and we need to pay particular attention to who and what we listen to and what we say. If we do not, we will enter the trap of following another gospel altogether. That is a gospel full of misinterpretation sown in the place of truth. Today the serpent is still as crafty as he always was and always will be. Until he has you totally under his false teaching of the words of God and under his selfish words and influence and not the Lord's. Notice this, that the Lord when he was being tempted by Satan quoted the correct words to Satan. It is written, Jesus said, we must follow the correct way to have victory over the enemy of mankind. We must quote the correct word. Satan could not do anything but fail in his attempt to corrupt Jesus. Because in the truth of the correct spoken word to the enemy, there is always victory. Not our victory, but the victory of the truth of the word. Any signs of victory for Satan over Jesus was lost in the correct quoting of victorious truth of God's word by Jesus. Satan had to flee. This teaches us that if we want to defeat the enemies of our lives, we have the only answer we will ever need. The correct word of God. This is why you must check, listen to the spoken words of others, 
no matter who is speaking them to you. Eve was very close to Adam. It is a struggle to correct those close to us. We are responsible to correct those we are close to. Even it is uncomfortable to do so. They must be, they may be lost to the truth forever if we do not correct them in the season, in this season of their life. Satan and others will, without doubt, teach them more and more incorrectness of the word until they are trapped in the lies of Satan. It is important to try and pass the truth of learning these lessons in a way people can understand. Overcomplicated teaching of the gospel can lead to misunderstanding of the gospel by ordinary folks like me. We need to keep the teaching of the word in an understandable way. People can be brought to a curious mind, a thirsty spirit that desires to learn more of the gospel for themselves directly from God. We can only point them in the direction of God's word. The whole truth they have to learn for themselves from God. I've been talking about a very basic blueprint for victory. But how is that found in the real living out of our lives? All right, slight change of direction here. The Trinity first hinted at in the first scriptures that Sheila read. How important are our lives in the Trinity? And how important is the Trinity in our lives? I believe as Christians, our lives are wholly dependent on the way we see and accept the truth of the Trinity and how much we need their cooperation in our lives to accept the purpose of the Godhead for individual lives. Do we as individuals agree with the Trinity viewpoint or do we believe in a different explanation for the Godhead? I often hear people say that if it's not in the Bible I do not believe it. Well sometimes we need to think a bit more about that particular comment because trinity a word we hear a lot about yet it's not a word found in scripture a word not found in the bible so how do we see and how do we explain this viewpoint i'm going to tell you some of my views on this matter other people have many different views to mine you need to study the word and talk to god himself personally about your views and your questions in all matters of the word. God should be your first port of call. God uses his word, his spirit and his people to help us in understanding of his message. He is the ultimate authority of his word. And he sent the Holy Spirit to guide you and me to his correct words not man's many different interpretations of his word. Trinity, a word used to express the doctrine of the unity of God, subsisting in three distinct persons, not one or two, but three distinct people in the one Godhead. The English word Trinity comes from either the Greek word trias, meaning a set of three, or the Latin word Trinitas, meaning threefold. We find some church denominations that do not believe in the triune God. They do not believe in the threefold nature of God. One God, but three distinct parts of the Godhead. Other denominations believe that the third person of the Trinity is a force or a power, and others do not believe in Jesus as being the one and only Son of God. They believe he is a son, not the only son. <clears throat> Some theolo theologians, very hard to say that word, clever people on both sides of this interpret differently God's word. It is important that I believe what the word says to me personally. To me it says he is the one and only Son of God and that the Holy Spirit is a third person of the Godhead. People often change their ways, change their behavior. Sometimes their thinking changes 
who or what and how they believe. In Romans 12 verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind, that by testing you may discern what the will of God is good and acceptable and perfect. Do not follow someone else's thinking. It doesn't matter if they are educated or uneducated. Do not be unduly influenced by other people who you may think have a better handle on things of God than you do. They do not have a better handle on what God is saying to you personally. It is a two-way conversation, you and God. God has chosen a particular path for you to walk, and only you can walk that particular path. You cannot walk that path if you are walking in someone else's shoes, someone else's thinking, someone else's beliefs, are not your own. Your own beliefs, whatever they are, are the important ones to God. He wants to have influence in your thinking, in your thoughts, and in who you believe. In Hebrews 13 verse 8 it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. He is the same person he has always been. He will never change. We are always changing. In Hebrews 13 verse 9, Jesus says, do not be led away by diverse and strange teaching. We have a choice in how we read scripture and interpret the word of God that's left us in the scriptures. There are so many different ways of interpreting the word out there. It is important you not list, just listen and accept. You must seek the truth of the word for yourself. <clears throat> Do not listen to me and just accept without testing to see. I might have made a mistake. I might have said the word in error. The words I speak follow biblical teaching. And you've got to understand that and look that up for yourself. Okay, back to the Trinity. I have two questions for you all, but... Don't worry, I'm going to give you the answers. Well, my answers. Do we baptise with a force or by a force? No, definitely not. Do we baptise without the Son of God? No, we do not. Why do I say this? Well, I don't actually. The Word of God says it. You can read about the answers in Matthew 28, verse 19. And it says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. Notice it does not say in the name of the Father and the Son. It does not say Father and Holy Spirit. These verses clearly say, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The threefold Godhead hinted at before are now bringing the lives of the Trinity into action. We believe and we baptize in the name of the Trinity here at Living Water Church. The Trinity is always working together in us and for us. They have different functions, but one purpose. Different parts to play in our lives, but they are united as one to bring our lives in unity with theirs. Their lives in you and me, their lives in everyone who hears them calling and believes in their heart, their message. In 2 Timothy 1 verse 9, Paul said, by the power of God who called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave to us in Christ Jesus. Before the ages began, and which now has been manifest through the appearing of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through their gospel message. We are called to accept the words 
of the gospel in our life. Are you an Adam or an Eve? Adam chose not to correct Eve's choice of words. He failed to say, no, listen, Eve, this is what God actually said to me. Instead, Adam chose to take the choice and the view of the created Eve. The choice of Adam's correction of Eve's word was the more difficult choice of the two. The right way is often the most difficult of the two choices. The dangers of following someone else's words are very, very, very clear. They are always separating you from God's actual words. Adam did not choose to correct Eve's words. Today, we still have this choice. Who do we choose to listen to? The disobedience of someone else's words, or do we choose to listen to the one who still wanted to talk to Adam, even after he had disobeyed him in the garden? Adam, where are you? God was still calling his name. Do you want to listen to the world's views or the creator's views for our individual path? A path that Trinity had lined up for us before time began. A path God has been walking and waiting and calling your name. Are you listening to God calling? God wants to walk together with you on his heavenly path forever. In Jeremiah 1 verse 5 says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. For us to know them, we have to come into unity with their word. Not a word we choose, but the gospel they gave the life of Jesus for. A gospel that hung in the balance for us all. The balance of Jesus nailed to a cross. And for this reason, he sent help. In John 14, 26 and 27, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. John 16, 13 and 14 says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into truth, all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. In these scriptures, Jesus does not say a force or a power will guide you. Jesus says he, the spirit of truth, will guide you. Many times in these particular passages of scripture, Jesus said the spirit is a he. Referring to a person, a person, not a force or a power. We have a helper sent direct from heaven. John 14, 26 and 27 says, But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all I have said to you. He has come from the Father, sent by Jesus, with your name and my name in his heart. And when we accept the truth of his word, he then writes about us in a big book, a book in heavenly script. There is room for your name and my name in that book of life. If we choose to listen to our helpers call for our lives. In John 14, 17 says this, even the spirit of truth whom the world, uh, sorry, the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Our name's in the heavenly book, Spirit of God living in us. It only gets better as these are only some of the benefits of our salvation. Not all. There is always more to come from our teachers. We can have a spiritual experience, a new birth from the old way to the new way with our helpers in learning the truth of the gospel, with the help of the Father who sent his Son, the Son Jesus who was willing to obey his Father's will, and the Holy Spirit 
who came to show us the way, to teach us the way to live a new life with him living in us, teaching us his ways. But you know him, for he can live in you today and will live in you forever if you acknowledge him. Except the Father sent his Son to endure the cross. Except that the Son endured the cross. Except that the Spirit guides you to the Son's cross. You may cross over from the world's way of life and death to a new life of death to your old self. A new life in them, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.